Hello, and welcome to BIM 360 Basics. We're in the middle of our collaboration for Civil 3D video series, and so far we've talked about what collaboration for Civil 3D is, whether or not you should use it in your company, and then we looked at setting up a BIM 360 project. After that, we set up Civil 3D to interface with that BIM 360 project. We talked about our team structure and who the different players are in our simulation, and our first player, our first role in the simulation was Tom, the surveyor. Tom created a survey file, which included an existing ground surface. Then we moved on to Paula, who's our designer. Paula laid out an alignment in her own file, saved that file to the project in the cloud. And then Greg, our civil engineer, worked on designing the road for the project in his own file. So now we're up to the point where some design has been done and our project manager, Mindy, is going to check in on the team and see how things are going. Now, Mindy doesn't even have Civil 3D installed on her laptop. In fact, she travels so much, um, she does a lot of what she does on a mobile device, maybe a tablet or on her phone. So we need to have a way for her to access what the team's doing without having access to Civil 3D. No problem at all. Here in MIM360, she can access the files in the project with just a browser. So maybe she notices that, hey, there's a road design file here. Let's see how things are going with the road design. Right in the browser, she can click on the file and view the file without any software installed whatsoever. All she needs to have is access to the project. And while she's in here, she can take a look at the survey that's been provided. She can take a look at the alignment that was laid out by Paula and also the profile that was designed over here by Greg. And maybe she sees a few things that she'd like to change. The great news is there are tools right here in BIM 360 that will allow her to communicate those changes to her team. So one thing she notices is that she'd like to see an additional road um, extending up into this area here. So she'd kind of like to let Paula know to add another road into this design. So what she can do is go over here to this icon and create what's called an issue. Once she's on the tab, she can click create issue and drop a pin right in the drawing in the location of where she wants the person to pay attention. And she can add a title to this, add another road. Let's assign this to Paula because she's our designer. And we can say that we want her to have this done by the end of the week. We can provide additional information about the location. Notice that right now I'm logged in as Mindy, so I'm the owner of this issue. I can choose a root cause, and if I drop down the list here, you can see it's quite an extensive list, and you can even create custom root causes. Now, the reason you wanna leverage root causes is because as the project goes on, you're gonna get a large collection of issues, all the different comments and changes that need to be made throughout the project. And at the end of the project, it can be helpful to do an analysis and look at the different root causes, which ones were maybe most prominent, which ones need some attention. And with each project, you can do a little analysis and maybe improve the way that you work by looking at some of those numbers. For our root cause, let's just say this is a design change. And then Mindy can provide a little description. Let's say we need some additional lots to the north. And to accommodate that, we're going to need a road there as well. So I'll go ahead and click Create, myself logged in as Mindy. And as soon as I do that, Paula is going to receive an email that says that an issue has been created that is her responsibility. In that email will be a link, and when she clicks that link, it's going to open her right up to this view, and it actually will open the issue for her. So it'll look something like this and it will zoom in to the location of the issue. Now, in addition to this, Mindy could also provide a markup. So let's click on the markups tab here and we can go over to the right and we have some markup tools right here on screen. So I'm gonna sketch in maybe what I want this road to look like. Maybe I just want it to attach here and go up in this location. And maybe we wanna put a cul-de-sac at the end of it. So let's put a circle at the end indicating a cul-de-sac. It's just a rough markup. I want to be able to do it quickly. We can also add some text. 
We'll just drop a box right here. Please add a road here. I can move it over and click Save Markup. And I can continue adding markups as I see fit. Notice that it's saving the markup over on the left. It stores who created the markup, what time it was created, and what view it's in. Now, one more thing that Mindy will want to do is change the status of this markup from private to published, because while it's private, only she can see it, but she's going to want, in this case, um, Paula to see it so that she knows a little bit about how to complete the markup. So now when Paula clicks that link in her email and she's zoomed into this file, uh, it will show the markup as well as the push pin, which indicates that this issue is for her to fix. Now let's say that um, let's say that Mindy continues her review and she notices that there's some topo missing here, and that's something that uh, that's something that Tom needs to take care of. So she'll create an issue, drop it in this empty space, and maybe just say need survey coverage here. We'll assign this to Tom Anderson. Remember, he's the surveyor. Give him a, a due date. That's going to take a little bit of time. We'll give him till the end of the month. She can provide her description. And when she hits create, now Tom's going to receive an email. So that's how Mindy can go about reviewing the design as it's in play. These are the live files that the design team is working on. And Mindy is able to go in and view them without Civil 3D and suggest that changes be made, either through a markup, an issue, or a combination of the two. Now, let's say Mindy wants to create an issue that doesn't have to do with any specific document in the project. For example, maybe Mindy just figured out that she's going to need to bring in a drainage engineer on the project. And that drainage engineer is from an outside company, and his name happens to be Hans Close. Now, I'm the BIM manager on this project. So what Mindy can do is she can go to the Issues tab. And by the way, that'll show her every issue in the project. She can create an issue right here that isn't linked to any kind of design file. And she can type in the title. Please add Hans Close. She's going to assign that to me. She wants this to happen pretty quickly, so she's going to give me to the end of the day today to do that. And, and maybe in the description, she could give me some more information about Hans, his email address, the company he works for. I'm going to need, at least need his email address to invite him into the project. So go ahead and she'll click Create. And now I'm going to get an email in my in inbox indicating that I have an issue to take care of. So that's how a project manager or someone in a similar role in the project without even having Civil 3D can access the files that they're developing, make comments, make markups, even assign issues to make sure that tasks are being completed so that that person can communicate in real time with the design team by seeing the files that they're developing, but also communicating changes back to them almost instantaneously. In the next video, we'll take a look at my side of this after receiving the email and what it looks like to address that issue. Thanks for visiting BIM 360 Basics. Please keep checking back to BIM360Basics.com for more tutorials, tips, and tricks all having to do with BIM 360.